So we're in the recently dropped for science upgrade this is ksp2 0.2.0 still in early access but it now actually has a campaign mode for us so we're going to be exploring that campaign mode starting today by going into space so we're going to start ourselves a new game here we're going to go into single player we'll start a new campaign uh, we're going to be going into exploration mode there's also sandbox mode for you to just want to play around with everything available but i'm going to go into exploration mode you can give it a name we're gonna call this tutorial campaign you can also set your agency flag and color but obviously you can set whatever it is you like and click set agency colors there we are and if you are new to KSP2 I would strongly recommend putting on cadet orientation even if you are a veteran KSP1 player because then you will get all kinds of tool tips pointing you in the right direction and orienting you within the game. I'm going to be turning that off for the purposes of this tutorial and we're just going to say start our campaign. And also if you are new I would also recommend going into the training center. There are all kinds of little videos here to give you the basics on not just how the game works but also on rocket science and orbital mechanics useful stuff that i'm going to assume you have watched i'm not going to go over those basics once again so if you're finding stuff in this tutorial hard to follow i would suggest first going to those particular videos but what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going right into mission control we're going to pick our first contract launch a rocket if you want or the only objective here it's listed here is to launch a rocket from kerbin and achieve an altitude of at least 10 kilometers that's not very high easy peasy for our first contract we get 25 science for that you can go down here and get a mission brief and you'll be introduced to dr carrie kerman who will give you all kinds of details on the mission as well as a lot as a lot of background color you can read that if you like but you don't have to all you really have to do is go down here and click track the mission and now you are well keeping track of the mission now one thing to notice with this is that there is no requirement for bringing the Kerbal back to the surface. Now of course we are going to be doing that, but what that means is, is that as soon as I achieve an altitude of 10 kilometers, I have achieved the mission. And if I wanted to, I can in mid-mission pop back here and pick ourselves up another contract to follow. So we're going to be taking advantage of that and actually do a couple of contracts at the same time but right now well let's build the rocket that's capable of doing that so as mentioned we're going to be building a rocket capable of getting into space not just simply achieving that 10 kilometers and we don't have a lot of parts to get us started we do have the mark one tin can right there and what i like to do is go down here to utility and right away grab myself a parachute because that is one of the things you most certainly do not want to forget we're going to go over here to coupling and grab ourselves a stack decoupler that goes under there. And then under this, we're going to put our fuel cans. Again, not a lot of options here. We're going to go with the bigger FL-T200. And we're going to put on eight of these. So that's one, two, and there's two more. And by the way, to do the copying, hold the alt key, and then you can make a copy. And that's a quicker way to get all eight of them just like that. And then underneath that... We're going to get our only engine, the LV-T45 Swivel. Now, the interesting thing is just with these parts, you can do a lot more than just simply get yourselves into space. In fact, you can do a heck of a lot with this because you can do simple things like, oh, I don't know, like do this, go to four-way symmetry, and now I got myself a monster rocket with a ton of thrust, a ton of delta V. I can click on i can put decouplers on the bottom of these engines i can keep building up i can build really big and really with a little bit of experience with these introductory parts build yourself a rocket that can get yourself pretty much anywhere that's not what i'm going to be doing we're going to build ourselves just something that can get into space now i do want to talk about making a decent rocket a rocket that is relatively easy to fly and there's just a couple of tips that you need to keep in mind one is to take a look at your center of mass which is this one right here down at the bottom and your center of pressure and what you would like to do is put the center of pressure which is the blue and black ball below your center of mass 
And although this rocket actually will probably fly just fine, how you do that is you grab yourself some stabilizers under the aerodynamic part, and I'm gonna put just four of these down here. To be honest, an experienced player probably can fly this without too much trouble even without these stabilizers, but we're gonna make this a tutorial, so we're gonna make this as easy as possible. And you can see, here, let's put it that way, there we go, that our center of pressure is now well below our center of mass, that's a good thing. By the way, let's take these two off again. These parts here are procedural. If you grab, click on the little wrench, you can make them bigger, smaller. Let's actually just look at the wingspan. Uh, this is a little beyond what I want to talk about. You can actually make them really, a, they don't have to be particularly big for this exercise. But uh, just to let you know, those tools are there if you want to play with them and change these wing shapes into anything you want. The next thing I want to do is notice that I have myself an empty stage here. I'm going to just delete that empty stage right away by clicking the little minus button. There we go. And then I'm going to click on the little gear tool beside here. And this brings up the Delta V tool. And we're going to talk a lot more about Delta V in the next episode after this one. But for now, I want to show a couple of things. Number one is uh, the higher your Delta V, basically, the further your rocket can go. That's, that's all we need to remember for now. It's a measure of how much velocity you can impart onto your rocket. But what I want to draw a bit of attention to here is the thrust to weight ratio of one point, so small there, nine something. <laughs> it's very small and hard to read. That is in a vacuum. I can change that to an atmosphere if I like, and I say apply to all stages. And now I'm shown a delta V for all the stages. Um, notice it's gotten smaller because rocket engines are less ex efficient in an atmosphere. And my thrust to weight has become less. So what thrust to weight is, is it takes the thrust of your rocket and divides it by the weight of your rocket. If the number is more than one, then rocket will go up. If the rocket is less than one, which is perfectly fine, by the way, once you're in the vacuum of space and into orbit, your rocket will not go up. So if we're going to want to lift off the launch pad, we want our atmosphere thrust to weight ratio to be more than one. You also don't want to make it too much more than one. Now, right here, about 1.66 or 1.68, I'm having a little trouble reading the number, to be quite honest that's going to be perfectly fine. But if this number is getting really big, you're going to have a rocket that's going to go very fast. It's going to be subject to heating issues. You also are likely to have more control issues with a rocket that's going to accelerate that quickly. You can control this thrust to weight ratio by right clicking on the engine. And on the end, this brings up our parts manager and we have here a thrust limiter. Right now, the thrust limiter is set to 100%. In other words, if I put my throttle at full, I'm going to get full thrust out of this. But if I want to, I can bring that thrust limiter down and you can look down here and see how our thrust to weight ratio has gone down as well to about 0.78. Now 0.78, that's below one. That means our rocket won't go up. This is not going to work for us. So we can play around with putting it. Now I could have left it at 100 to be honest. Um, 1.68 or whatever it was before was perfectly fine. Here is 1.36. That's going to be nice too. I actually kind of like a thrust to weight ratio in around 1.3 to 1.4, but that's kind of a personal thing. Play around, see what kind of rockets you like to fly and where you like your thrust to weight ratios to be. But I just wanted to show you that that control is there. We can now close this. We can now close our Delta V tool. The other thing I want to do is take a look at the staging. You can reorder these stages, whatever order you like. Myself, personally, I like to put the decoupler into the same stage as the parachute so that when I stage my capsule up here at the top, this parachute will arm at the same time. That means I got an empty stage, so I'm simply going to hit the minus button to get rid of our empty stage. If you want to add stages, you can use the plus button, obviously. But we're going to take out the minus or that stage and hit the minus button. And then finally, the only thing we got left to do is to pick our Kerbal. You do that down here with the Kerbal Manager. We have Bob Kerman in there, but if you want to switch in somebody else like Shetmund here, you can just put in Shetmund Kerman or whomever else you like. But other than that, we're going to close that and we're going to launch. Okay, so before we actually lift off, let's take a quick look at some of the tools that are down here. One of the things that's very useful is this button here, the mission tracker, showing you what your 
mission is to launch a rocket from Kerman and achieve an altitude of at least 10 kilometers. And when we succeed that, that will be checked off. The other thing you really want to pay attention to over here is this. This is showing you what experiments you have available. If it is flashing, that's telling you there's something that you could do. So let's click this and open up our research inventory. So over here, you can see that we have just done a crew observation. So that crew observation was done automatically. If you're used to KSP-1, you don't have to do all that right clicking and stuff. It's already done for you. Uh, we have collected for science. That science can be transmitted if you like, but transmitting does use electricity and we don't have a whole lot of electricity aboard this rocket, so I'm not gonna bother. When you recover your Kerbal, you'll get that science anyway, so there's really no need to transmit unless you're not going to be recovering the vessel. Down here towards the bottom, it tells you a summary of how much science you've collected. We have four science in data, and we also have four science, or zero science in samples. Talk about samples in just a little bit. So if I click here, or if I hover over the science icon on the right here, you also notice that it says go outside. Some experiments must be run by a Kerbal on EVA. To go to the EVA, we simply go over to our Kerbal and click the little door icon here, and the Kerbal goes out and hangs on to the ladder. If I right-click now on the Kerbal, I now have an opportunity to do a surface survey or an, and a crew observation sitting here on the, what is it says for landed on Kerbin at the Kerbal Space Center. And to do that, you simply click the little button. But the problem is, is that it says that this is an invalid research location. They can't do this hanging from the rocket. They have to have their boots on the ground. So um, I guess I could let go, but it's an awful long drop, so I'm not going to do that. And I'll never get the Kerbal back into the capsule, so we're not going to bother with that. However, if you wanted to get that science, you could just very simply launch a capsule, get the Kerbal, go outside, do the survey by, again, right-clicking on, on the Kerbal and just clicking it and then put the Kerbal back in and recover and you're done. I'm not gonna bother, it's such a simple thing to do. You go ahead and do that if you want. Instead, what I'm going to be doing is seeing here, notice there's a little menu that says the board, I have to press the B button. So I'm gonna press B and just put the Kerbal right inside. So I'm gonna ignore this little flashing. It's telling me to do something that right now I just don't wanna do. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to hit the go button or if you like, hit the space bar and go up. And after a brief countdown, by the way, if you hit this, it'll skip the countdown, or you can hit spacebar, it'll skip the countdown too if you're getting tired of it. And we are off in a lot of fire and brimstone, and we are going here and noticing our science button is still flashing. We can click that. We've added on another crew observation. Now we're up to eight science that we have collected. And we can also pitch just a tiny bit over towards the east, just a little bit, because I do want to land in the water over here. And then I'm just going to simply lock this onto the prograde vector and really just let this thing ride. I want to keep careful eye on my AP, my apoapsis. Um, remember, it's got to get to at least 10 kilometers. That's going to be easy. But I'm really interested in getting into space. And that's going to be an altitude of at least 70 kilometers. Now, I don't want to go too high. So I'm going to be cutting my throttle when this gets to maybe, I don't know, about 100 kilometers. That'll be more than good enough. Over here, it's telling us our current altitude. We just cracked 10 kilometers and we got our message that our science has been collected and that our, we got a science reward and that we have achieved the contract according to our mission tracker. However, this is not a good spot for us to stop our rocket. I'm going to actually put it on lock here. I don't want to tilt over too much any further than I already am. Instead, we're just going to keep going more up and up and up. I don't want to keep tilting sideways. So by locking, I've locked it to my current attitude. Just like that. And I'm watching my apoapsis. And we're at 90. We are at 100. I'm just going to cut the throttle there. That is going to be in space. 
So just in summary so far, by completing that contract, we got 25 science. Remember it told us that in mission control that is sitting at home waiting for us. The contract is complete. All I'm waiting for is a safe moment to go back to mission control and pick ourselves up another contract. And that safe moment will come when this altitude is, let's change it to sea level, is over 70 kilometers because that will mean I am in space. Might be safe right now, but I like to wait till I'm actually in space. Now it's not super safe because we're actually, if we look here, on a trajectory that's going to impact the surface once again. <laughs> so we do have to come back. Okay, we're over 70 kilometers. Let's hit our little icon here, go over to mission control. And yeah, we are <laughs> gonna be crashing in 15 minutes, but that's okay. So we have achieved that contract. So we want to recover the contract to do that. You click the little science thing and you are going to submit our report and get ourselves our 25 science. And again, we get some, some color here from Carrie, but really just gonna speed through all that. Say over and out, little animation. There's our 25 science, sorry. Now we're getting our 25 science and we say thanks science, but we now have a second contract to get ourselves out of the atmosphere. So we're going to track that one. Again, if you wanna look at the mission brief, that's fine. But what I'm more interested in is going over to the tracking station Let's do that because from the tracking station we can look at everything that's going on and we're interested in our rocket here the fly safe one we're going to click on that and we're going to control it and amazingly we have already completed the primary mission of being out of the atmosphere we also have more science that we can do let's open that up we have more science here we did a crew observation in a uh, low low orbit we're not really in orbit but that's okay so what we're going to do is very quickly, we are now falling, so we've got to do this quick. We're going to go back to mission control. And we're going to take a look. We're going to submit this one, get that science. Again, listen to Carrie for a little bit. Over and out. 50 science for that one. Woohoo! Off we go. And we have also orbit carbon. We're not in a position to be able to do that, so I won't accept that. But buoyancy test, land a pod in the water of carbon. Well, we're going to do that. 40 science, so let's grab that one, track it, go back to the tracking station. We got to be quick, got to be quick before we are entering back into the atmosphere. Control our fly safe rocket, and there we go. Now, what I like to do is I like to turn our rocket sideways here a little bit. And then what we're going to do is hit space bar to stage. And there goes our stage off that way. Then I'm going to put this back onto the retrograde vector because that's the direction going. I like to put this on surface so it's on the surface retrograde vector. And the little blue on here is telling us that our parachute is now armed and ready to go. So we should be just falling straight down back towards Kerbin with our precious load of science and contracts and remember we do have a contract here to do the buoyancy test all we got to do is land the pod in the water off of Kerbin so with this one mission we've polished off well we've already done two hopefully a third contract lots and lots of science and again through all of this keep an eye on your little science indicator Again, if you're used to KSP-1, I just want to reiterate, it's a lot simpler. I overthought it the first time I was playing this with the 4 Science update. There's not much to think about. Watch the little light. If it comes on, click the button, get your science. If you need to go outside, it will tell you you need to go outside. And there we go. We have, another, we, we have completed this contract for the buoyancy science. Again, there's a bunch of science that came for that that we're going to be getting. Uh, notice that we are flashing here with our research location. There is a research opportunity. It is also telling us to go outside, so we will do that. But first off, we've added a bit more science. Another crew observation splashed on the surface of Kerbin. And... We can now do an EVA, and this time, because we are on the surface, we are free to let go. Kerbals swim very, very well. You can, again, click on here or right-click on... The, oh, even if you just click on there, there she, she goes. She's taking herself a little surface sample. You can barely see what she's doing, skipping or uh, scooping up the water. Actually, I think it's a he. It is a he. I am very sorry. 
and over here we got our thing to collect a surface sample and some surface data it did both of those and that's 16 science all told we can now grab back onto our capsule and we can press b to board and now we got our entire summary of science here we have some samples we have 18 science worth of samples and we have 42 science worth of data just very briefly the difference between the two samples must be returned but data can be transmitted however transmitting does use up electricity and if you recover you'll get this science anyway so if you're recovering your vessel there's no need to transmit so what we're going to need to do is go over here get our menu up and we are going to recover not revert recover our vessel so we're going to say there we go and we are going to confirm our recovery we get a happy little message here of everything that we did oh i guess part of our vessel was destroyed i don't know what happened there ah uh, whatever funny messages we're still in beta don't forget that this is still early access but now don't forget to always go back to mission control you do not get the science from these experiments until you've submitted your report so go back to mission control click on the little science button and say submit and again carrie gives you a little bit of color if you want to watch that but basically we got our 40 science everything's great thank you science if you want to we can now go into research and development where we can see our tech tree we have got ourselves 175 science to spend and we're going to be spending that but before we do that we should be really taking a look at what our next mission is going to be and that's going to be the topic for next episode i hope to see you then